That's your Spencer Oliver's uh, array of contacts. We've had both these fighters in studio not that long ago. The man who was known as the Celtic Warrior, Steve Collins, of course. What a fighter he was. And of course, uh, the very one amongst the very, very best, Chris Eubank Sr. Uh, he was with us not that long ago as well. Out in cinemas next Friday is One Night in Mill Street, a film detailing the story of Steve the Celtic Warrior Collins and Chris Simply the Best Eubank. Uh, it is a phenomenal movie. It is a great film. In fact, before we go on and have a chat with the director, here's a teaser. What are we looking for? We're looking for entertainment. How do I move my body? They need their replacements. And I seem to be the guy who's replacing everybody throughout my career. Steve! I never heard of Mill Street, and I said, well, Mill Street is where the Eurovision Song Contest was held. To go to my opponent's backyard when I'm champion? On St. Patrick's Day weekend. Oh, look at me. I said the only worry that we had was that, that Collins would get killed. Getting the fight was like a rocky story. Steve was very clever, and he would think of ways to get under an opponent's skin, but I had no idea what hell was about to be unleashed. He's the champion. Right? This is mind games. Tony Quinn used to sell these hypnotism tapes. I knew nothing about boxing, by the way. I'm gonna win. The sort of sinister twist to this was that Tony Quinn had trained him not to feel pain. What a load of rubbish. <laughs> Legal cheating. This is war. Oh, yes. The film already has won the Audience Award at the Cork International Film Festival and the Best Documentary Award at the Irish Film Festival as well. Full interviews with Steve Collins and Chris Eubank. It is a memorable movie. And the man who directed the lot, One Night in Mill Street, Andrew Gallimore, joins us live. Andrew, you're welcome to the show this afternoon. Uh, Simon's with me, so too is Spencer Oliver. Why did you want to put this boxing era, if you like, uh, if you like and this fight in particular, into into movie mode. I think it's like sport itself. Good sports talks all about the timing. And I think if you if you go too quickly after an event, what you get really are sort of glorified post-match interviews. If you leave it too long, people don't really remember it and, and you lose that recognition. I think this was the sweet spot between it being kind of an era in boxing and certainly an era in Irish history that people remember. But maybe it's long enough ago now that people are a bit more reflective about the whole event. I mean, Steve Collins does seem to be the forgotten man of that era, doesn't he? And if you look at his re record and his resume, it's an incredible one where he's had 39 fights, 36 wins. The only three losses come to Salem Callum Bay, Reggie Johnson, you know, that sort of era of fighter, that, that sort of cal calibre of fighter. And he's beat like Eubank twice. He beat, he beat Nigel Benn twice, stopped Nigel Benn twice. And he seems to be the forgotten man of that division, which is insane when you think about it. Those nights when he beat Eubanks out in Ireland were, you know, the atmosphere there, the crowd that he had there was just insane. Something something really special. I think, again, you're back to the timing. I mean, the, he was kind of fighting in America when the whole Ben, Eubank, Watson trilogy of fights went on. So, And that was the last of the kind of the, the, the era of big terrestrial television fights. And one of the many aborted starts to the movie when, when we started cutting it was Barry Hearn actually talking about that transition from, you know, being on uh, primetime television on a Saturday night on ITV to Sky Sports. And basically, as he said at that time, it was the it was trading off 10 times the audience recognition for maybe 10 times the purse. And, you know, he knew what, what, what he wanted. Uh, and Collins, of course, was out in America when that whole Watson, Ben, Eubank thing was kicking off. So he then does become almost a forgotten man. Mm. Uh, how much did the two key characters here, uh, of course, uh, Eubank and, and Collins, uh, Andrew, how much did they buy into being in the movie and, 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 if you like, doing their bit for you? It was amazing. I mean, I, in terms of a hit rate of potential interviewees, this was uh, off, the, off the charts because... A lot of this ended very badly. If you look at all the key characters and draw lines between them, yes. there's, there's a number of disputes and court cases and all sorts. And yet they all agreed to take part. I think, again, it's to do with the fact that enough time has gone by. Um, Eubank, I thought, was uh, an extraordinary one because it's, it's generally easy enough to persuade people to come on to your film to talk about great victories. It's much more difficult to persuade them to come on and talk about the first time they ever lost. And... Um, 
And he was very gracious, I thought, throughout both the interview and the, the process of setting the movie up. And I spoke to Chris Eubank about it. He loved the film. He thought it was a fabulous project. He talked about it in detail with me on something I did with him about two two months ago about the sheer quality of what you've produced and walked back down that 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 pathway of all the challenges that that Steve Collins brought with the hypnosis and the headphones and all the psychology that went into the place. And I tried to question him about why why he'd fought in Dublin and why he'd gone to Steve Collins's backyard to some extent. But he was absolutely waxing lyrical about this film. Really was Chris Eubank was. Yeah, I think I think the film is a winner here. If if I'm being honest, um, you must be thrilled about the reaction to it, Andrew. What do you hope will be the takeaway for people who go to it, see it? What's the takeaway from it? I think the takeaway really is that I'm hoping we did two things. First of all, captured the event and and how significant a sporting event it was, certainly in Ireland at the time. But I hope we've also sort of tried to capture what was happening in Ireland at the time as well. You know, it was a it was a country that was changing really quickly at that point and this event almost symbolized that fantastic i mean it's got everything in it hasn't it feisty press conferences unconventional mind games hypnotism and outright psychological warfare well done with it andrew gallimore great great job by you the director of one night in mill street thanks uh, very much indeed for joining us this lunchtime i mean you're a fan of both of them but collins as you say you feel Spencer still doesn't get the recognition for what he did. Absolutely, you know, that was an era, that was an era that will always go down in history, you know, with the fighters that you had around at that time, Michael Watson, Steve Collins, Nigel Benn, Chris Eubank, you know, they, 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 they were all in that mix. That's what I grew up on. That's what inspired me, really, in the yeah. early 90s to come through and achieve things in the sport of boxing. But, yeah, I think that Steve Collins doesn't get the recognition that he deserves, and hopefully this will highlight that in this yeah. movie because he does deserve that. I mean, it, it, you know, the guy was a phenomenon. When you think oh, about absolutely. it, like lost to Mike McCallum out in the States. And well, like, the only so challenge that Steve Collins had was the personalities of Nigel Benn and Chris Eubank Sr. Sure. Because they're, because their personality, well, you've seen it. You know, yeah. Certainly with Eubank Sr., you see what he's like. You're always going to be, uh, to some extent, eclipsed by him. But Steve Collins, I think most people that know, know. Oh, the, the boxing Celtic fan warrior, knows. You know, yeah. And, 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 yeah. His, and his achievements are pretty much well marked. Mm. Simon, thank you very much indeed. You and I will be back tomorrow with Martin Keown. Really? Who wants to know why he wasn't mentioned at the awards night the other night when we won the a good award. Good Friday. But well, that's I fine. I suppose it's an average Friday now. Spencer, isn't it? thank you very much indeed. We've been ribbing producer Luke for uh, losing his luggage the other night after the awards night. Uh, goodness knows where his luggage is. But I have a spandex good, outfit. That's right. I have it in good authority, Spencer, that coming back from a recent fight night in Sheffield, uh, you vacated a train uh, and your luggage, as we speak, is presently in Merthyr Tidville. Uh, what's <laughs> well, happened, to, what's Jim, happened there? Jim, the, is very true and I did get the next tra train and I did make the contacts to be able to collect my case at that point but my excuse is yes many years ago yeah I sort of had half my head removed this what's is true. Luke's yes exactly uh, anybody out there if you're on a train and you I see I have some theories on that if you, if you see a little suitcase <laughs> with uh, producer Luke written on it please send it to us here at the news building at London Bridge before it's... you get arrested for its contents <laughs> correct <laughs> Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.